Where should, how should we do it? Take a seat right next to me. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. I think we should introduce ourselves, huh? Yeah, take it away. Hi, I'm Leah Thompson. You may know me. Thank you. You may know me as the star of Howard the Duck, but I'm also Zoe's mother. Um, my name is Henry Winkler. Thank you. And I am the proud dad of Max. So first, let me just say that it is unbelievably great that you're all here. Um, this is the very first weekend for Flower. And you said something to me in the hallway. You said, here's a fun fact. What is that fun fact? Oh, the fun fact was yes. that I dyed Zoe's hair for the movie. It's true. I gave her black roots and green bottoms, and it was very, very subtle, but I was very proud of that, that work. And Zoe kind of designed it. She asked me to do it, and she, had, she trusted me with that character choice. My fun fact is that Max came to us when he was 10 years old. He said, I am going to direct movies. And here we are all together. That's amazing. Can I, can I ask you a question? Uh, and listen, and we're going to open it up so everybody gets to ask questions, you know. Uh, in the back, you have to yell out because we can only see the first three rows of the top section. We know you're there, but can't see you. So, you know, m just making an average television show, uh, an hour of television that you all watch uh, costs about uh, uh, over a million dollars. And here, you've made an entire feature film for how much? Um, a little over half a million. How many days? We shot it in 16 days. Okay. So I, it wasn't what, fun. I wouldn't applaud. <laughs> <laughs> what were the shortcuts that you had to take, that you had to give up? What were the sacrifices that you made? Craft service. <laughs> um, what, what were some other ones? Sleep. Sleep, long days. Sanity. Max no likes food. to say if we were going to live to 90, um, we are going to no longer live to 90. and we're Dead going at to 70. Yes. Dead on the floor. <laughs> um, of natural causes. Got it. Okay. Um, we, it was great. I mean, it was really a, a level of um, pages per day that even with all t television stuff I've done and been lucky to do didn't, I, there was no comparison. So in television, you do about nine pages a day. What did I've you never guys? done nine pages a day. Never? No. no. But maybe I, we we did a lot, and it was we would shoot a Catherine Hahn shot for four days, so that relationship in and with, out. Yes. So that relationship with Zoe and Catherine formed. That wasn't like over months of shooting where they formed that closeness. That was just two amazing actors immediately wanting to make the same movie, and understanding what needed to happen right away but there wasn't like let's let's just try to find it and and let's keep working on it like those were like you know five big scenes a day so Zoe would do a scene and you would on a normal day on a normal shoot that would be like you'd shoot half of it in a day and she would do five or six of them in a day it was really exhausting yeah, but it didn't seem, when we talk about it and, and sort of cite how many days we actually shot it for, it sounds much more daunting than what it felt like on the day. It, did, you, it never felt, for me, in terms of, once the camera started rolling, it never felt rushed. You were really generous and um, awesome about making sure that if I was like, I want one more, I never felt like you would say, right. say no to that. But I, I was in terror internally. I'm sure. <laughs> <clears throat> I have a question. Uh, when Zoe gave me the script to read, I, I just instantly thought it was a great script. I mean, I just put it down and said that was just amazing. How long did you work on the script or, or to develop it, or how did that come about? The script had come to me um, with that character fully realized, written by this person, Alex McCauley, who's a brilliant writer, and I'd never seen um, a script with a female character like that. Um, it felt like those were all the parts reserved for the guys in sort of the great 80s movies that I would always watch, whether it was like the Corey Haim movies or Over the Edge or 
Ferris Bueller, you know, like it, I, there was something about the fact that it was a girl that really excited me, like driving all this plot and not a love interest. And um, the original script was way funnier probably than this one. It was more of a comedy and I was more interested in the other aspects of it. And so we, my writing partner and I talked to the writer and we all sort of agreed on what the direction was we wanted to go with it. And, but we, we finished the script to a point where we thought was, was as good as it's going to get until we hire someone who can put this in their own words and make it feel like their own. But we read so many girls and really talented actors, and we couldn't find someone that made it feel real. And so I was convinced that the script was really bad, and that we it it didn't feel real. And then Zoe, your daughter, had sent in a tape uh, from Canada, and she was shooting, and it was late at night, and she you she turned in a tape, and the producers called me, and they were like, I think this is it, and I was like, Yeah, right, it can't be. I didn't even know who it was, and then I looked at it, and it was immediately clear that this was the person that was supposed to do it and, and then the writing wasn't so bad anymore <laughs> and oh, yeah but it was her great, yeah great. and then i really yeah it, anybody it's, have a, a a question out there anybody okay sir yeah i'm gonna say your lead acting there and all the energy of the great pop music it did. Wonderful. That's, was, we, that's wonderful. This gentleman that's thought that uh, Zoe had uh, all of the energy of uh, a great actress. Pop music, yeah. actually. Yes. But yeah. Uh, hmm? um, Zoe, yes. what was it that. Yes, what, mother. <laughs> <laughs> this is the nepotism screening that you never knew you needed or wanted. <laughs> and you're just gonna, we're just going to face it head on. Not yeah. avoid it. We didn't help you guys get these jobs. I mean, you got them yourself. Right. I know. I'm making so fun of myself. I'm interested, I I'm interested in what about the script, except for that it was a great script, that you really responded to, that really made you... Because you've, you've not only done this script for zero, zero dollars or whatever, but you've put your heart and soul into every aspect of this movie. You did so much work. I saw the stack of books you read you have gone full commitment to this movie. And so um, what about it that sings in your heart? What is it? Well, I think because I grew up with you and, and because I grew up with you know, like-minded artists and always surrounded by actors and musicians, and I knew how, I know how um, rare it is to find something that you immediately just go, oh, shit, I, this is amazing. And um, in that way, I think that's why I, went, I really went full steam ahead. But what caught my eye about the part and what made me really passionate about it um, was her relatability. I found her to be very relatable, bizarrely. I found her to be super frustrated by her world and her relationships, and I found her to be very frustrating. And I'm sure you can attest to how frustrated and frustrating I was when I was a teenager. <laughs> She's like a teenager now, right? <laughs> this moment. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, so I just found her to be her, you know, this sort of uh, put on cavalier bravado behind that was this real beautiful fragility that I thought was awesome. And you know what? Like, I know you're hearing this a lot right now, but the truth is I just don't read parts like this for women. I just don't. I don't, I don't see them. And it was so exciting. It was so exciting to read this part. Mom, stop filming. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. <laughs> Phone down. Dad, do you have anything you want to chime in on? No, I. I, I you, you know, you uh, when when your when your child says they want to go into the same business, and you know how difficult the business is, and you immediately think, in your mind, you're thinking, doctor. Uh, uh, anything, but uh, but that you want to be a director. But then you know how tough it was for you, and so you think, I'm not going to say a word. Stacy and I are not going to say a word. And we totally trusted that you were going to meet your dream. How do you feel about this journey? The journey of wanting something and now being able to do it. I'm trying to work on um, being present in the moment and feeling grateful. It's really difficult, but I'm trying. 
And I'm grateful that we went on it together, Zoe and I. We were really partners in this and really sacrificed a lot. And um, I'm I'm grateful for that. And, um, it, you know, we made this movie for no money. The fact that it's playing at the Landmark and the Arclight in my hometown theaters and it's a testament to the people that are released it. I'm happy that The Orchard bought it, who made some of my favorite movies, whether it was Hunt for the Wilder People or What We Do in the Shadows, like movies that play in theaters and should be seen in theaters. And um, I love watching movies at home too, but there's something really magical about a shared movie experience. And um, I, I don't know, I just, it's, I, I'm really trying to feel grateful. Yeah, well, no, you sounded, you sounded good. <coughs> Any other questions out there? Yes. Uh, was the valley part of the original story, or was that your... Uh... Good question. It was not. Was the, the was, valley was, was, yeah. part of the original story? The valley. It, it wasn't, and uh, I grew up in the valley and got into a lot of trouble in the valley and rode my bike a lot in the valley, um, and it was really personal to me, and... It felt like it I, when I first read the script. I was certain that to make it feel as personal to me as possible, as I worked on it, I wanted to set it in the places where I used to hang out. Um, it's just it gets very hot. What is the trouble that you got into in the valley? <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah, somebody in the uh, somebody back there. Yes. Um, just congratulations. You made a, a special, very beautiful, nuanced film. Uh, Wait a minute. He just said, congratulations, you've made a I think, very special I think, and nuanced film. I think the rule is that if we can hear him from all the way up there down here, <laughs> that everyone can hear. You know what? I'm a short Jew. <laughs> I'm not taking the risk. <laughs> Continue, sir. Huh? You're, you're still the director too, so there, there you go. Um, well, I want, what, what's really special about the film is the tone, and I'm watching it, and, and it changes uh, even subtly genre throughout, but it's a, really just a human, uh, beautifully realized story. Uh, so I was wondering how you were thinking about the tone and prepping for it, and just the prep in general, uh, what you guys did uh, rehearsal-wise. and Sure. I think the the way the tone works in the movie is casting the right actors who make it feel real the whole time and the music, which is usually the first thing that comes to me and on this was the last thing that came to me. And um, the guy who, did, we were talking a lot about Risky Business and the Interstellar score, both of those two things, to feel like to have the fun of... Um, like that sort of 80s synth score with like the emotion of something like Interstellar, which I'm obsessed with. And finally, this guy, Joey Stevens, who um, has done, has worked with our producers, the Rough House guys on Eastbound and Down and Vice Principals and is amazing. He lives in North Carolina and I went, I flew there and sat with him and listened to music and we finally cracked it, but it took a really long time. But the real testament to the tone is just the actors and and everyone made everything feel real because they were great. Even stuff that could feel far fetched and um, so that that was really it. And you know when you're making these movies, the the biggest thing to derail any creative process is when two people are trying to make a different thing. And everybody wanted to make the same movie. Everyone knew the movies I was referencing that I wanted it to feel like and we all bought into that and so there was never that conversation which is a nightmare because then you're like oh this is a much longer conversation because we didn't have time um yeah did you do rehearsals how much rehearsals did you do before <laughs> well max and i spent so if we shot the movie in 16 15 and a half 16 max and i spent more than double that amount of time together prepping and you were very um open and uh, into the idea of being me being a part of that whole process and being really collaborative. And I think that was very helpful for us in terms of on the day, just our communication was really, I think that's the thing I'm most proud of with our relationship in making this movie was our communication was pretty awesome, even when we would um, be arguing. Um, always a clear line. <laughs> there was always, I really felt like there was, it wasn't out of ego, it was for 
making the best thing that we could possibly make. Um, but rehearsal wise, I mean, I, I we I didn't meet any of the actors until about five minutes before because yeah, like, they, we had there was yeah. We we cast the kid Joey, who's amazing from Chicago. They met on the Friday before the Monday we started shooting, and he didn't even know how to drive stick. <laughs> um, and then he learned in two days. And then Max put him um, in charge of driving me around in that stick for a, a week in 110 He's degree genuinely heat. Genuinely good. Genuinely good, but we're no lucky. air conditioning. No air conditioning. Um, yeah, we didn't. There wasn't time to rehearse, but we, there was a lot of time to talk and and read books and watch movies and. You know, it sounds so nice stuff. and fun when you say it that way. Because <laughs> that's what we did. That's what we did. It's what I did with my Carolina, my cinematographer, and Trisha, my production designer, and Michelle, my wardrobe designer. We all just talked and watched movies and sent pictures back and forth and passages. And whether it was Andrea Dworkin or Amber Rose, and it was, it was like, you know, there was no bad ideas. I, I would just like to say, uh, make a comment. As an actor, I've worked with a lot of different people. I've gone to the movies, gone right here, been in these seats. Zoe, your ability as an actress, your ability to translate from the page to the screen, to jump off the screen into the minds and hearts of an audience, I think is astounding. You are Aww. not just. <laughs> is that true? Mm. And I. Stacy and I have thought this from the very first time that we saw you, when we saw you in a movie before we saw this movie. It, uh, you, I, I mean, it really needs to be noted. It, uh, there are lots of people who are called to be a professional actor, and there are um, a thimbleful uh, who can actually transcend the, uh, the job. Well, actually, Fonz, you kind of stole the show for me. <laughs> I've seen Zoe in a lot of different films, but she really didn't get a chance to be who she is. And in watching this film and in seeing her on TV interviews, I feel I almost saw the, the real person that this role was made for you. And you did a fabulous job. Um. And, we, and you're going to go very far in this film. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I feel like that's one of the, you know, like, Max, you did, you made such a, an incredible movie, and it's so uh, nuanced and so complicated, and in the middle of all that. Sorry, I just saw my screenwriting teacher. Wait, is that not Noreen? Noreen, this is, will you stand up, please? She's the first person, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, you have a dog? She's the first person who taught me how to write a script. We took a picture for Spicer. Spicer's in New York right now. Take a video for Spicer. Noreen, say hi to Matt Spicer on the video. Yeah. Say, okay, good. <laughs> we love you. I'm sorry. I can't believe it. You taught me how to write. And you have your dog. Oh. Yeah. What's your dog's name? Digby. 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 Okay. Digby. I'm sorry, Leah, go on. That was an insane experience. I really feel emotionally indebted to you, Noreen. I'm really wow. happy to see you. I hope like you can give me your notes after. Leah, what were you saying? I was just saying that it's a really beautiful movie, and I love that you, uh, you know, that you did. I've been acting a long time, but the thing is, is that when you create a safe space with an actor and you let them be collaborative, you end up getting something that's organic and real, and it does. It has a really powerful softness. I mean, I, the, the, I don't know, it's the filters you use too. Like there's something, it is a love love story to the valley in a lot of ways and the way that you decided to shoot it. But anyway, congratulations to you for making such a, a interesting and, and difficult and Thank beautiful you so movie. Much. Yes. Oh, we'll be right there. Don't go away. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm still a little shaky from She's a little shaky. This experience, I, it was a really beautiful film. It was so kind of emotional. So thank you both for that. Um, Thanks for coming. But how was it kind of 
how important was it to you to have the female crew working on this film about a young, strong character? Is that something that's going to happen or something you've heard? It was the only way I would make the movie, and it was in my first meetings with the Rough House guys who were completely open and excited by it. And so we had all female department heads with the exception of, thank you, with the exception of our uh, grip and electric. And um, it was by far and away the best film set I'd ever been on. And there were no fighting. It, it was it was just a different energy. The only two people that fought were our grip and our electric, the two guys. Um, the two guys. I wanted to just eliminate as much as possible, and I walked the line anyways between masculinity and none of it, um, but uh, just eliminating the male gaze as much as I could and try to, just for this movie, I wanted to tell it as authentically as possible, and I a, was a 32-year-old white cis male, and, and I wanted to, I, I didn't want that to discount me from making the movie if I could do it respectfully, and so to empower all those women to keep me accountable and to give Zoe free reign to tell me that's not how I would say it, that's not what I would wear. And Zoe really became my partner on it, just like Carolina and Trisha and Michelle and Sarah Beth, the editor. And um, it, it, it lent itself to a very safe environment for everyone. And um, yeah, what were you gonna say? Uh. It's ironic about what I'm going to say because I, I just interrupted you. But I think during this movement and this time that we're living in, at least for me, the thing I'm trying to <laughs> do better is listen. <laughs> Clearly just didn't do a very good job there. But one thing I want to note is that Max is an extraordinary listener. And he really, really, truly listened to every single woman that he hired um, and wanted to listen to every single one of the things that they said, big or small, or for me possibly unimportant, like I cite the example when I'm flossing in the in the movie and I was adamant that I needed glide floss rather than a pick floss. And for some reason, he allowed the space for me to bring that to the table and not be like, okay, shut up, I have bigger fish to fry. And um, he was amazing at that. And I think that's uh, something to note for sure. Back there, you were so patient. Uh, well, hi. Hi. Uh, proud. Uh, cousin, actually, your uh, your the thing about you, Max, is you put it on the page, and then it makes it easy to interpret for a good actor. And then the a dance between the two of you have was elevated on the screen, and that's what you see. And so, to me, what makes this movie unique is that you can see a unique voice, and that you can celebrate that unique voice, and it's here. So I think you did a great job, the two of you really understanding each other. Thank you. I, I don't want to. Right there, do you have a question, sir, with the strong hand raise? Yeah. <laughs> Could you explain uh, as much as you can where the script came from and the idea of the character and how it developed and Absolutely. D Dad, I don't think we need to repeat that one out loud. Um, uh, the script was on a thing called The Blacklist, which is where the best unproduced, the scripts that people vote for to say are the best unproduced scripts of that year. And those movies don't always get made into, those scripts don't always get into movies, and sometimes when they do, they work, and sometimes when they do, they don't. And it was sent to me by... Um, one of the producers on this um, who works for Danny McBride, Jody Hill, and David Gordon Green, who are three people I deeply admire and make courageous, I think, movies and television and, and stuff. Um, and they sent it to me because David Gordon Green um, has been a really kind supporter of mine. <clears throat> and But I still went in and, and pitched sort of what my vision was for it. And once they said I could do it, I brought on my writing partner and we rewrote, worked on the script and worked on stuff while maintaining the spirit of the original one. Was there any improv? A lot, yeah. I, I, I feel like once the script is done, I really, when you have really good performers, whether it's Tim Heidecker or Katherine Hahn or Zoe, I really, and, the, and Dylan Galula and 
at them and you know you really encourage people to put things in their own words and make it feel as natural and real as possible I love the two girlfriends. Where me did too. you? They are so funny. <laughs> they kill me. Yeah, they're Where? amazing. That's strictly great casting director. Like I had no idea who they were, and I hired this casting director because he had worked on Short Term Twelve, which was a movie I really loved, and I, I loved. I had seen Dylan and Kimmy Schmidt though. She, I'd never seen it. Yeah. They are... you they were... like that show? <laughs> They are the best Greek chorus ever. Yeah, they're amazing. Yeah. I, and so much good stuff, just for whatever reason, I didn't all get to end up in the movie just to keep it as short and sort of quick as we could. But um, those guys, they're so talented. What did you cut out? <laughs> You're, you gotta get the, by the DVD. <laughs> Sir. What were the books that you saw? Zoe, you want to tell us about the books? She had a stack like this high, she read. Uh, um, uh, uh, Reviving Ophelia was a really cool book to um, revisit for me. And Go Ask Alice. And um, there was a book called uh, Sex at Dawn, which sounds like a romance novel, and it's not. Uh, what else was there? There was a ton. There's a lot of Andrea Dworkin uh, essays and Kate Millett. Judy Bloom books, a lot of those. I mean, really trying to... I think part of one of the important things for uh, we had decided about Erica was that everything she does is not is not um, spontaneous. It all comes from a place of, I hate the word manipulation, but there is there is a sense of manipulation and everything she does, we talked a lot about consent and a lot about um, how the things that she does that may be perceived as sexuality were very transactional. And I know that can be a hard thing to kind of grasp when you're watching these um, shocking things in a movie, but it was all very transactional. She was very disassociated from it, so I wanted to try to do my best to read up on that. And it was always her choice. Everything she did was what she wanted, and even if it was misguided at points, it, it was very important that there was, no, it was all about control for her. I think, do we, do we have to go, or are we okay? Is there anyone else? Ryan, we have two more questions, right here, yeah. I don't have a question, I just wanted to say that I, I love the cinematography and the way it's shot, because some scenes are just shot so beautifully, and Especially the interactions between the mother and the daughter, you know. The camera and That's Carolina Costa. Carolina Costa's a genius. She's the youngest woman. She's the youngest person. I'm not sure if she's the only woman. She might be to win the Ariel Award, which is like a sort of an Academy Award in Mexico. And I feel like immensely close and lucky to have worked with her. Did she operate? She doesn't operate. She likes to fiddle with the lights and stuff like that. So we had a great, um, a really handsome Lebanese man named Shadi operate. Oh, yeah. Very handsome. He actually, he's in the movie. He's in the movie. When I, oh, he's the sponsor. Yeah. And I say, oh, he's hot. <laughs> That's how low, we didn't have an actor. So it's Shadi, get in there. So who operated? Carolina must have operated for that. Yeah, Caroline operated for, for that. that one shot. So yes, the DP did operate at we one point. We literally didn't have money for background actors. So like the Surprise majority... we didn't call you guys in. Yeah. <laughs> All right, last us. question. Wait, I think you had one on, though. I did. I Is there anybody back there? We got we to gotta keep... We got to give it. it this, these two people get to go. Okay, sorry. These two women. Wait, you're, you and then you. Um, so we, the script was amazing. It seems like I've seen it in a lot of movies where the script is kind of mediocre, but um, they're not so much better. I'm in a play right now where, I mean, the script is just not what you want it to be, so how do you do that? I mean, it seems like it's something that's very unique to you. I don't think it's unique to me as an actor because uh, oh, yeah. she was saying that it, uh, she was... Uh, they, <laughs> they made fun of me. Z Zoe, repeat the question, please. Uh, you re you the question. This young lady is in a play and she wants to know the play is not everything that she wanted it to be and she asked Zoe how do you take material that is not great and make it come alive am I right? But she was talking Thank about other movies. Thank you very movies. much. You know, Thank you. you. <laughs>
you know. She said that Zoe did other no, movies no, where the right, script wasn't as good. Talk. Okay, look. But this all one right, was Mom, good. All right. Okay. Actually, I do talk about this with my mother quite a bit, and uh, I have definitely um, played um, in Dirty Grandpa, a one-dimensional female character in a male-driven comedy, and the thing that I had to come to terms with is that no matter how hard I tried and fought and, and worked on the script and gave my notes and, and wasn't afraid to bring something to, the tab something to the table, I had to come to terms with the fact that um, it, it, acting in a movie or acting in a play isn't... Um, a solo art form. It's not like writing a song. It is very collaborative. And if they don't want it to be more than one dimensional, it's not going to be more than one dimensional. And you can do everything in your power to bring as much depth to the character as you can. And that is what your job is, is to service the story as best you can, in my opinion. But it can be sometimes really difficult. And you do your best. And it's about process, not outcome, is what I've had to come to terms with. I have with. one statement about that. Um, I literally, when I was like getting to watch your stuff, I watched you in Dirty Grandpa, and I don't know whether it was a good movie or not. I didn't watch enough of it, but I saw that you elevated the material that you were given, and I actually thought you were great in it, and it was one of the things that really excited me to cast you in this. And I think that's a lesson that you we could all learn from Katherine Hahn or Philip Seymour Hoffman or all of these people that have tiny scenes in movies and stay with you because they bring a life and they do their work, and there's no part that's too small. And I, I, I don't you're, believe that though. Yes. Do you guys believe that? I don't I'm believe telling that. you, I had that I experience though. I watched I you and I thought you were good. And I don't believe that there is no part that's too small because I feel like it, it's really. But maybe I'm. I don't no. know. You no, know? that's okay. because that is because of your internal engine, <laughs> and it's because really that is because you don't know how to do. Um, you know, just you want to tell the the story. You have an energy that is. But like it's possible. Out there. And what's the you, yeah. Can I just say one thing before you say? Um, just, it is the actor's job. You, you, they don't hire you to fill time and space. They hire you for your imagination and you fill it with that. Yeah. And um, so many times you have a director who doesn't know what they're doing, unlike my son. <laughs> and you say to them, Oh my God, that's a great idea. I thank you so much. And you do what you know is right. <laughs> and they will say to you when the take is done, didn't I tell you? Yes, thank you. Yes. True, true. Um, I thought the movie was incredible, Great. stunning, unpredictable, and deeply moving. Um, mm. I just wanted to ask Zoe, um, what was the hardest part for you about slipping into like Erica's mindset, slipping into that character, like was there anything you really struggled with or like um, sort of couldn't come to terms with? Thank you for your question. Um, I can answer this very easily. The most difficult part of shooting this movie was dancing. <laughs> I hate dancing, and the one time I wa I seen the movie on the big screen, I literally my face was like that. I was it couldn't look. I feel it was horrifying. I am a terrible dancer, and it was it was that was so hard for me. I can't even explain to you. I I don't even want to look at anyone in the eyes thinking about the fact that you watched that one scene. So that that was the most difficult for me by far. <laughs> <laughs> but when you put your feet on his shoes, when uh, I, I saw it, I, I've seen it now three times, I tear up every time. When you smell his sweater when you're dancing with him, makes you one of the great dancers of the 21st century. Oh, Henry, I love you. I think you're that's a wrap for all of us. Thank you, Thank so, you so much. much for coming. Thank Tell you your friend. mom. Thank, Thank you, mom. you. Thank you, Henry. Thank you so much for coming. Looks like we'll be signing some autographs.